Live from Waterford and Ungarvan, this is Waterford at One. Good afternoon, I'm Sinead O'Hearn. Today's top story says criticism that the programme for government doesn't mention 24-7 cardiac cover for Waterford. A pact involving Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and three independents has been formed on Waterford Council. Businesses in Waterford have been told that outdoor seating for customers is not permitted until the end of the month. And in sport, Alan Reynolds has left Waterford FC. <laughs> The political parties looking to form a government have started putting their proposed deal to party members. There are sceptics in all parties as a two-week voting process is being prepared. While the deal is expected to pass the Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil memberships, the Green Party is far less certain. Thonishta Simon Coveney believes, despite critics and detractors already, the next government can be a good one. I mean, I'm not one of these people who believes that, uh, that being in government means that you're going to have a bad election the next time around. I mean, you know, Fine Gael have had have had a bad election this year, uh, but we still have a strong mandate. Um, we have been in government for the last nine years. Uh, that the government that we're trying to put together now can be a strong, exciting government that, that the people will respond to uh, in a positive way. And- Waterford Fianna Fáil TD Mary Butler has defended the programme for government when it comes to 24-7 cardiac care here. There's been criticism that while the proposed deal commits to delivering the second cath lab at UHW, it doesn't mention 24-7 cardiac care, which Mary Butler campaigned to deliver. Speaking to Damien Tiernan on Daisha Today, Deputy Butler says a second permanent cath lab is the first step. So let's be quite clear, this is a 100% increase in hours that it will open. Currently open between 39 to 40 40 hours a week and we will move immediately to an 84 hour level of cover. The main focus is to deliver quality of access for cardiac care on a 24-7 basis. That is my focus. The challenge will still be in getting the seven consultants on a permanent basis. So this is just not simply a matter of write it on paper and you can deliver. She says Fianna Fáil is still committed to 24-7 cardiac care for UHW. In order to deliver 24-7 care, you have to have a second permanent cat lab. It is on the way. I know very well what it's like to have my father-in-law in that particular ambulance. I know firsthand what it's like. And I have fought with every breath in my body for the last four years to try and deliver this. And I am not going to stop. But it's just not as easy as writing it down on paper. You need the consultants. You need the auxiliary staff. You need all the, all, all the factors coming together. And I do believe with the delivery of the second cat lab, I do believe when we see the crane on site that people will realise it will eventually happen. Meanwhile, the Programme for Government's commitment to Waterford has faced sharp criticism from Sinn Féin TD, David Colnan. When I see a Programme for Government that doesn't mention 24-7 cardiac care, I ask myself, what was Mary Butler and Marco Kosick and the Fine Gael representatives doing that they couldn't get that into a Programme for Government? No mention of the airport, no mention of the North Keys, no mention of the increased capital funding which is necessary for the university. I mean, if we're going to have a university of any value, and you talk to Willie Donnelly and Patricia uh, in, in uh, Carlo, they tell you this. You need to increase the footprint of both campuses. A new pact has been formed on Waterford City and County Council. A controlling group of Sinn Féin, Labour, the Greens and several independents came together after last year's local elections. However, Sinn Féin voted against the budgets put forward last December. Independent Councillor Joe Kelly says a stable pact was needed. We're coming towards a new election of a mayor and also the upcoming budget, which under the circumstances will be quite difficult or could be quite difficult given the COVID crisis that we were still in, a stable council and a stable pact was needed. He says the new pact includes Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and three independents. Myself and Councillor Joe Conway decided that we would support the parties of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael with ourselves and another independent councillor in the county, Seamus O'Donnell, and that that group committed to supporting budgets come budget time for the stability of the council and for the benefit of the people of the city and county. It's for stability 
Businesses in Waterford have been told that outdoor seating for customers is not permitted until the end of the month. Many believe that offering customers a table outside their premises was in line with phase two of COVID-19 restrictions. However, Gardaí visited a number of premises yesterday advising them that this was in breach of regulations. Paul Reid, owner of the Kiosk Cafe, is looking forward to phase three on June 29th when outdoor seating can resume. Well, the seating um, adds to the atmosphere, obviously, you know, and people like to sit out and watch the world go by, as they say. Uh, unfortunately, no, we can't put out our seating today, but there is some public seating around that people can still sit on. So hopefully it won't take from the good atmosphere that we've been experiencing too much. These people enjoying coffee in John Roberts Square this morning say they're disappointed with the news. We would have. We, we would, would have. Yesterday we sat in a chair and enjoyed it. And we weren't sitting near anybody and I didn't see any harm in what we were doing. So I'm, I don't agree with the fact that they've stopped them putting them out. And I think those people that have returned to work, it's going to harm them. Fianna Fáil councillor Eddie Mulligan's looking for clarity from government on the issue as he says their message led to confusion. None of the businesses were providing service to the tables. It was up to the members of the public to decide if they wanted to use the seating or not. Anybody using the seating was taking their own responsibility to socialise but maintaining physical distance from everybody else that was sitting there as well. So yes, there has been a little bit of confusion from the local authority message and the government message and that really needs to be clarified. Is it acceptable to provide outside seating or is it not acceptable to provide outside seating? If it is, what are, I suppose, the other precautions that the government or local authorities are advising or is it specifically the 29th of June? There were no new cases of COVID-19 in Waterford. The total figure since the outbreak began stands at 154. As of 8 o'clock last night, there was one patient with COVID-19 on site at University Hospital Waterford, with a further five awaiting testing. A new all-hours tech support service is being launched to help anyone going through a mental health or emotional crisis. 50808 will provide immediate support to those going through a breakup, bullying, depression or suicidal feelings. People can start a conversation with a crisis volunteer by t- texting TALK to 50808. Waterford's Ian Power CEO of SpunOut.ie says the system is designed to address more serious calls first. It looks for those keywords that may indicate that the texter is at higher risk than others and it stack ranks those textures to the top of the queue. So it sorts out the queue and it, is, it, it sorts it by severity over chronology. So what's really important to us is that we get to every texture within five minutes. That's what we aim for. But for those textures who might be um, at more imminent or higher risk, we hope to get to those textures within a minute. The benefactors of Waterford Cycle for SOS are holding a free wellness webinar this weekend. The cycle, which is organised by Councillor Liam Brazel, usually takes place at Easter but was cancelled this year to, due to the pandemic. It's an aid of mental health charity, Suicide or Survive. WLR is instead asking people to undertake a 20 kilometre cycle from their own homes and to make a donation on our website. Robert Curley's facilitator with the SOS, he says the webinar is this Saturday. Penultimate day. Of this challenge, we're going to have a webinar. We're going to call it our WLR, called it Wellness, Laughter and Realness. And they're the things that we want to talk about in relation to mental health that day. And just to say thank you to all the people who've got on their bike, who raised the funds, who put in a bit of sponsorship, who put in a bit of time, a bit of effort and the energy to support principally Liam and then us as a benefit of, of Liam's influence. And then from us to benefit people who just need to hear something that they can do for the wellness. Make the smart play with Virgin Media. Check out their smart home packages at Virgin Media, George's Street, Waterford. Sponsors of the Sports News on WLR. Starting with soccer, where Waterford FC have confirmed the departure of manager Alan Reynolds. Alan Reynolds spent three years in management, securing promotion from the first to Premier Division in his first year with the club. He then drove on to reach a European position in 2018 to then consolidate Waterford as a top flight club in 2019. The club's thanked Alan for all his hard work over the years and establishing the club as a strong contender in the League of Ireland. Reynolds has been linked to coaching roles with Dundalk and the Republic of Ireland under-21 team. In Gaelic Games, Waterford's clubs backed a new structure for the senior football and hurling championships at last night's online county board meeting. There'll be no relegation this season as delegates supported a St Saviour's motion which will see 13 teams enter the 2021 competition. Thomas McCarthy has details of last night's draw. Both championships consist of four groups of three with the top two teams in each group 
qualifying for the quarterfinals. The Senior Hurling Championship runs from August 1st to August 30th. Bally Gunner will begin their bid for seven in a row against Tallow, while 2019 intermediate winners Bally Sagart will face De La Salle in their first senior match. The draw in full, Group A, Bally Gunner, Passage and Tallow. Group B, Mount Sign, Rowan Moore and Clon A. Group C, Dungarvan, Lismore and Four Mile Water. And Group D, De La Salle, Abbeyside and Barry Sagart. The Senior Football Championship will run from September 5th to October 4th. Holders Rat Gormuck will open their title defence against newly promoted St Saviours. The draw in full Group A, Balnacorty, Clashmore and Ardmore. Group B, Denier, Galtier and Kilmac Thomas. Group C, Rat Gormuck, Kilrossenty and St Saviours. And Group D, Strabbilly, Onrhine and Bricky Rangers. And in horse racing, it's day one of Royal Ascot. The first of seven races goes to post shortly at 1.15. Sports news on WLR is thanks to Virgin Media Waterford. WLR asks you to stay safe by keeping your distance. Our next bulletin is at two.